There have been some whispers about this for some time, but now it seems the news is official. IGN reported today that the Alien and Predator properties will be moving from its home at Dark Horse Comics to Marvel, with new stories to begin next year. This news was reaffirmed by Marvel in a press release with Editor-in-Chief C.B. Sabusky making a statement on the acquisition. There's nothing more thrilling than a story that will keep you at the edge of your seat, and Alien and Predator have delivered that time and time again. I can clearly remember where I was when I saw each of these modern masterpieces for the first time, and reveling in how both masterfully weave extraterrestrial dread and drama into some of the most iconic scenes we've ever seen on film. And it's that legacy that we're going to live up to. This move to Marvel promises new stories, so it's unlikely we'll see the continuity of the Amanda Ripley and Zula Hendricks stories pushed any further beyond the stories we've seen with Aliens Defiance, Aliens Resistance, and Aliens Rescue. However, the next installment, Aliens Colonial Marines Threat Rising, which was meant to continue their story, was already cancelled, and it was likely we'd end up seeing a fresh start anyway. So now it just so happens that this fresh start will also happen to be with a brand new publisher in Marvel. I've personally met this news with excitement and mixed feelings. Marvel's legacy and reputation speaks pretty much for itself. They've published some of the best comics and most memorable characters in history, and with such a high profile, they're sure to entice new readers with new stories into the world of Alien and Predator. I see that as something very positive, and we may still see some old favorites return. The press release boasts that the new comic series will feature new and classic characters from Earth and beyond to explore never-before-seen corners of both the Alien and Predator universes. That's intriguing enough to leave fans of the comics and of the movies wondering what they may have in store for this new era. But I am saddened to know that the Alien and Predator stories will no longer be produced by Dark Horse, which has been the way of things since 1988. It's been their signature franchise, as far as I'm concerned. I associate Alien and Predator with Dark Horse as much as I associate Batman and Superman with DC and Spider-Man and the X-Men with Marvel. It will take some time to adjust to this change. I've been completely enamored with the world of Alien and Predator through the eyes of Dark Horse since childhood. They've always come up with bold and original stories and novel ideas that make you think about this world differently, as recently as their adaptations of unproduced screenplays, such as with Alien 3 and the upcoming original screenplay adaptations of Alien and Predator. Dark Horse has built a legacy that they should be immensely proud of, and that fans such as myself hold very dear. It's my hope that Sabusky's comments about living up to the legacies aren't limited to just the movies, but live up to the Dark Horse comics legacy that precedes these new works. While we won't be seeing these new stories until next year, artist David Finch has already created cover art for the new Alien and Predator comics that will be released. We see the classic xenomorph stalking the halls of what we can assume is a spaceship or colony quarters, keeping in line with the style of futurism we're used to seeing. You'll notice there's a Walkman in the corner, or hey, maybe Big Chap will run into the Guardians of the Galaxy, who knows, not that I want to start any rumors. But a tease that's very hard to ignore is the Predator cover, which very clearly displays the Predator on top of the Avengers headquarters. The Hunter is holding its trophy, the head of Iron Man, or maybe just one of Iron Man's drones. But there's a lot to think about from this cover and a lot of speculation where they may be bringing this story. Could they start things off with a huge bang and give us Predator vs. Avengers right off the bat? That would be kind of a cool welcome party, so to speak, and it would definitely get a lot of people's attention. And it probably would be a smart enough move to get something like that out of the way immediately, since people would be expecting it. And it would be a clever enough move to capture the interest of Avengers fans and introduce them to something that maybe they otherwise wouldn't be reading. A whole new generation of Predator fans could be lying in wait. Obviously, the crossover potential on the whole could be very entertaining. I could certainly see the Hulk going up against an alien queen, or Wolverine slashing through hordes of xenomorphs, or other fun things like that. Which is all perfectly fine, but it's my hope that they don't depend entirely on crossover novelties. I'll be profoundly disappointed if it's turned into something as cheesy as Crossover of the Week and turn the aliens and predators into mere target practice for the Marvel heroes. They deserve better than that. So much better. They deserve their own stories, and they shouldn't be aimed at kids. I do sincerely hope that these new stories are catered for more mature audiences, and that they're self-contained within their own universe. 
That's something we got in spades from Dark Horse, so once again I hope that legacy is hopefully matched. Matched and respected. Dark Horse has released its own statement on the move. Mike Richardson had the following to say. After 30 years of publishing the greatest aliens slash predator slash AVP stories in the Xenoverse, Disney will be pulling the publishing license from Dark Horse. As the new owners of Fox, this is their right, of course. Dark Horse has been one of the longest standing and most successful of Fox's licensing partners over the nearly 35 years we have worked with them. Our first Aliens series, written by Mark Verheiden and illustrated by Mark A. Nelson, was a smash success, moving away from the generic storylines common in film and television-based titles and toward actual sequels to the original material. The success of Aliens led directly to another series based on a Fox science fiction film, Predator, written by Mark Verheiden and illustrated by Chris Warner. This first series was the basis for the Predator film sequel, and Warner's iconic first issue cover served as the inspiration for the sequel's film poster. The natural extension of those licenses led Dark Horse to come up with the monster hit, Aliens vs. Predator. Mixing the two franchises was a huge success with fans, and became one of the most successful series in the history of the direct market. After many years of shepherding these amazing worlds, Dark Horse will not be publishing any new material effective January 1st, 2021. Thanks to all the people at Fox for the amazing run. Now, as in recent events in which new owners meant new publishers of series conceived here at Dark Horse, we have new and fresh titles to replace the old. Comics and original graphic novel series such as The Witcher, Stranger Things, Avatar The Last Airbender, Minecraft, and Critical Role have developed huge followings. And we will continue to strive to be the finest publisher of licensed comics in the world. Watch for more exciting announcements coming soon. So, Dark Horse says goodbye. I'm saddened by the loss of this property from a great titan of publishing, but look forward to seeing what's on the horizon as an Alien fan. This is all, of course, still very new information. We don't know word one about the stories yet, but I'm curious to see where Marvel takes our beloved characters. I wish them the best of luck, and I know I'll be reading. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this news. Do you see this as positive, something to celebrate? Are you worried Marvel may not live up to the challenge? And if crossovers are inevitable, what Marvel characters would you most like to see face off against aliens or predators or both? Please comment below and share your thoughts. As always, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a like, and you can also subscribe for all the latest videos from the channel. A very, very special thanks goes out to Wayland Jutani Executives, Emurik, Mark Fox, and in the Ellen Ripley tier of excellence, Lady Anne. Lady Anne, I know you've mentioned to me on more than a few occasions that you'd love to see Deadpool in the world of Aliens and how fun that could be, so it looks like we're one step closer to that becoming a reality. My thanks also goes out to the Hive Queens, Ronnie Jensen, Alisane, and Jackson Roche, all part of the Patreon Hive. If you'd like to join the Hive and support the channel, check out my Patreon page for exclusive posts and contests. In the meantime, you can catch up with Alien Theory over social media. Follow at Alien underscore Theory on Twitter and at Alien Theory YT on Facebook and Instagram for more. And until next time, this is Alien Theory, signing off.